God is with us. Good morning and welcome to First Church of Christ in Simsbury. Whether you are here in person and we have a wonderful full house here on this Palm Sunday or whether you're watching from home, uh, I greet you warmly. My name is Pastor George Harris. I'm joined this morning, as I often am, by Rev Kev, Reverend Kevin Weichel, by uh, the maestro Mark Mercier, uh, Jim Martoccio, you heard perhaps on drums this morning, our own Mark Scully, Tom Palizzi, as always, uh, and our choir, and on and on, and all of you, our usher, boy, oh boy, it's a great, great Sunday to be together to worship God. Um, Palm Sunday. I mean, look, we have a full house, and, and which, so let me say a couple things. Let me slow down. We're an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we really try to live by those words, embody that, take that all in. So I hope you feel that and experience that here this morning. Before I say too much else, I want to invite any children that are still sitting with your parents, if you would join Heather Chuchka in the back, um, because there's going to be an opportunity for you to process around Palmer Hall with your palms and maybe shout some things and just create a big ruckus. And so um, you wouldn't want to miss out on that. So, so if you would just join that little procession that's uh, gathering back there, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a moment. Now, just um, a word about everybody's least favorite subject, masks. Um, bum that we're still talking about this. Some of you know that uh, we had just gone to a mask optional uh, approach. And, um, and then lo and behold, a couple weeks ago, we had some uh, COVID, more than a little COVID in our choir, um, uh, troublemakers as they are. And um, um, praise God, uh, they're all uh, either healed or well on their way to being healed. Uh, but that just made us a little nervous. And, um, and we're still kind of figuring it out. But we went back to recommending masks. So thank you. I see you all wearing masks this morning. Thank you for that. Um, you may also know, have noticed that um, we're not entirely consistent because I don't think, last I heard, we weren't requiring masks in church school because that's what they're doing in school, right? So, so we're, we're still working it out. So a little grace on your part. Just know we're really trying to keep people safe and also be respectful of the science and do all the things. And, and hopefully by the time we get through Easter, we'll be back to some kind of, you know, kind of more comfortable uh, arrangement for all of us. But thank you for the time being for, for wearing your masks. Um, it is Palm Sunday, and as the numbers of you attest, um, it is one of the more joyful Sundays of the church year uh, next to next Sunday, Easter. And so I fully expect that we will get to experience some of that joy together this morning. Let us be together in prayer. With great joy, we welcome you, Lord Jesus. The journey has been long, and we have longed to enter the holy city with you. You come into our hearts and our lives humbly, patiently, encouraging us to learn and grow, to embark on journeys of hope and healing. Open our hearts today to hear your words as we sing praise to you. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. Amen.
please join me in the call to worship. The journey has been long and sometimes very difficult. During this Lenten journey, we have seen miracles and mysteries. Now the Lord comes to us in victory. Jesus rides into Jerusalem and into our hearts. Blessed is the one who comes in the Lord's name. Hosanna in the highest. As we do each week, we gather here to share in a unison prayer of confession. And we do that because we know when we are honest with God and honest with ourselves and honest with those around us, God empties us of that uh, which makes us unwell and fills us with grace and mercy and forgiveness. So let us join together in our unison prayer of confession. Lord, we confess that when we start this journey, it seems like a fun idea. Walk the road with Jesus, we thought. But the journey has had many difficult times when our spirits have been challenged and tried. We have come to the time of entrance into the holy city. We want everything to be wonderful, for you to conquer all those things that threaten us and our peace. We want you to do what we direct. Forgive us, Lord, when we place our fears and ignorance before your love. Help us to look again at the many ways in which we can be a blessing to others through serving them you. Release us from our panic and mistrust and help us to place our lives solely in your hands. Let's take a moment for silent confession. God wants nothing more than for us to be whole and at peace, so God walks with us on our journey and forgives us. For this, we give thanks to God. Amen.
Today's scripture is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you'll find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, for it was quite late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve.
There are a couple traditional ways to enter into Palm Sunday worship. First, we have already witnessed is as a child, which means don't overthink it. Wave our palms, shout Hosanna, and enter into the marvelous spectacle and mystery of it all. What does it all mean? Who cares? It's Palm Sunday. <laughs> For those that grew up in a church, this is one of those Sundays that brings back great memories from childhood. Memories we are recreating for our kids this morning. Another traditional theme for Palm Sunday sermons is that the exuberant crowd that greeted Jesus misunderstood who and what Jesus was. They were expecting a Messiah that would drive out Roman occupiers from Jerusalem and restore Israel to the greatness and glory it once enjoyed under King David. On this Sunday, they welcomed him as a conquering hero with shouts of Hosanna, Hosanna, saved, we are saved. By this telling, the crowd would be sorely disappointed, devastated, heartbroken, as the following week unfolded and their Messiah would be arrested and executed on a Roman cross. This interpretation provides us with an opportunity to reflect on our own expectations of God, of Jesus, of our faith. Are we also hoping for a conquering hero to come save us from all our worldly trouble? What does that look like for us? Then, maybe 10 years ago, I came across another interpretation of the events of this day. By this account, on this day, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, would lead a Roman garrison into Jerusalem before Passover. The streets of Jerusalem would be packed with Jews from across Israel and beyond, a situation Rome recognized as ripe for rebellion. So Pilate led heavily armed Roman soldiers on horseback, riding chariots, swords and shields glinting in the sun, sending a message to the entire city, don't even think about rising up, we will crush you. But at the same time, Pilate and the Roman soldiers came in one gate. Here comes Jesus riding through the other gate on the back of a donkey. By this telling, the triumphal procession is political theater, meant to contrast Jesus' message of love and inclusion versus Rome's violent assertion of power to exclude and oppress, meant to confront and even ridicule Pilate. Now, variations of these themes have been the Palm Sunday messages in my preaching basket for as long as I've been in ministry. Until this year, when the Spirit moved me in a new direction. What if the crowd didn't misunderstand Jesus' fate, but knew all too well what lay ahead for him, and the persecution that awaited them as his followers? What if they were well aware that they would wake up Monday morning and again face the day-to-day -day hardships of life? What if they chose to celebrate anyway? What if? The inspiration for this perspective began last Sunday night when I was watching the Grammy Awards. I love watching the Grammys for a couple reasons. It is my once a year opportunity to catch up on who's who in popular music. It's especially helpful to watch with my daughter, Abby, so I can ask, okay, who's Doja Cat? <laughs> I still don't really know the answer to that, but I know she's important in some very, very significant way. The other reason I watch is there are always some amazing musical performances. These sometimes bring artists together who would otherwise never share a stage but the result can be magical. But this year, it was a solo performance that knocked my socks off. John Batiste is the band leader for the Stay Human Band on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Now, for those of you who are of the Johnny Carson generation, John Batiste is Stephen Colbert's Doc Severinsen, okay? Well, John Batiste was nominated for 11 Grammys and won four, including for Album of the Year. He performed his song Freedom from that album, and oh my. It was a big production number, 
relentlessly upbeat, joyful, with lots of backup musicians and dancers dressed in colorful, fanciful garb. Abby, Lourdes, and I were shouting with delight at the TV, letting the joy of the moment lift us as our bodies involuntarily shimmied and shook to the beat. We did everything except throw our shoes and shout Hosanna. <laughs> now, I had watched Batiste on The Late Show for years and know that he is a very talented musician with deep New Orleans roots. Along with his jazz chops, he is classically trained and has a master's degree from Juilliard. But I had never seen him like this. A bit of Sly Stone, some Michael Jackson and Prince, and 100% himself. So now, a full-on fan, I began Googling, at first to find the music video for that song, Freedom, but then to read articles and watch interviews with him. It was there that I learned that he got married in February to his longtime girlfriend, Suleika Jawad, best-selling author of a memoir, Between Two Kingdoms, about her diagnosis with leukemia and subsequent recovery when she was only 23. In an interview that aired on CBS Sunday morning, last Sunday, the day of the Grammys, Jim Axelrod spoke to both John and Suleika. John tells Axelrod, one thing I've learned from this time is it can all go away. Things can change very quickly from one day to the next. Your world can be turned upside down. Just eight days before the nominations were announced, John and Suleika learned that her leukemia had returned. His biggest day, the day the nominations were announced, was her first day of chemo in her second battle with cancer. They sat in the chemo suite together while John's phone filled up with congratulatory texts. They found themselves needing to hold these two realities together, determined to find their balance. As Suleika says, holding the absolutely gutting, heartbreaking, painful thing and the beautiful, soulful thing in the same palm of one hand. You have to do that, she says, because otherwise the grief takes over. This past February, they were married in a tiny, beautiful ceremony, a secret until the interview aired. It was the night before her bone marrow transplant. They used bread ties for rings, determined that the cancer was not going to interrupt the plans they had for their lives. Axelrod suggests that getting married was an act of optimism, of declaration, an act of we have a future. John responds, it was an act of defiance. John's utterly joyful performance of freedom on the Grammys takes on a much deeper meaning in this context of his and Suleika's trials. Like his marriage, like his wedding, that Grammy performance can be understood as an act of defiance. And so, I suggest, can Jesus' procession into Jerusalem all those years ago, on the back of a donkey, to waving palms, the equivalent of bread tie wedding rings. Instead of a refrain of freedom, this production number was accompanied by shouts of Hosanna, saved, we are saved. So maybe those crowds didn't misunderstand a thing. Maybe they knew exactly the fate that awaited Jesus in the coming week. But on that day, they chose joy. In that interview, John says, the darkness will try to overtake you, but just turn on the light. Focus on the light. Hold on to the light. That joyful procession turned on the light, casting out the darkness that forever threatened to envelop the lives of Jesus' followers. Suleika speaks to the importance of finding a way to express what feels impossible to express, to express the unendurable. Suleika paints, and John writes music, plays the piano, sings, and dances. His dancing was the biggest surprise to me from his Grammy performance, an expression of utter joy. Mm. You 
hear that? Mark Mercier. There's a man who knows a little something about gutting heartbreaking, painful things and beautiful, soulful things and can hold them together in a song. And we too know about those gutting, heartbreaking, painful things, don't we? We have them aplenty, both in our lives and collectively in our country and in our world. So as Mark and Mark plant a little rhythm in our souls, let me offer this example of an act of defiance. Clapping on two and four. There are a couple ways that people, hang on, hang on, not yet. I'll give you the cue. I know you're excited. I know you're excited, but let me, hang on. Let me get this out. There are a couple ways that people clap to music on beats one and three or beats two and four. Maybe that doesn't sound like a thing, but I'm telling you it makes all the difference in the world. So let me demonstrate. Now forgive this break in decorum. Babe, can you come here a second? you to see my feet and see my knees so that's what that was all about this is one in three we might think about our foot landing firmly upon the path on one and three one in three takes us through life I suppose it might be a little judgmental to one and three to call them plodding. But once our foot is down, that's it. We're committed. One is head down, resignation. But two and four, oh, two and four are filled with possibility. We might think of two and four as the beat in which our foot is in the air prepared to take us anywhere, ready to step off the path of suffering toward new life. Two and four is heads up, looking beyond the horizon to an Easter we haven't even imagined yet. There's a line in Batiste Freedom, the reason we get down is to get back up. One and three brings us down, while two and four get us back up. Two, four, two, four. So Mark, can you bring up the volume a little bit? What is gutting and painful and heartbreaking in your life today? A broken relationship, loss of a loved one, illness, physical pain, our country, democracy torn asunder, unspeakable violence against innocence in the war in Ukraine. Stand up, come on, stand up. This is Palm Sunday. We won't be silent. Hosanna, save, we are saved, we are defiant, we choose joy. This isn't naive defiance, refusing to think about what lies ahead. We know that when we wake up tomorrow, there will still be suffering aplenty. This is akin to Maya Angelou's I rise. After all she has suffered, she repeats the refrain, and still, I rise. I rise, I rise, I rise. We get down, but we get back up rise on the two and four and then it's no longer one and three or two and four it's a parade it's dance it's defiance in motion
<laughs> like John and Suleika, like those that crowded the streets of Jerusalem all those years ago, we are asked to hold the absolutely gutting, heartbreaking, painful things and the beautiful, soulful things in the same palm of one hand. We have to do that because otherwise the grief takes over. We'll get down so we get back up. We rise, we rise, we rise. In the words of John Batiste, there's a joy to living that is still available to us, that is always available to you, no matter what you are going through. Find that moment of transcendence. The joy of living is available to you today. to our time together to share our celebrations and concerns and uh, we celebrate the uh, clapping on two and four and the <laughs> metaphor and meaning behind all of that and how we felt that in our souls. Thank you, George. We also celebrate uh, with the Skinners. It has been a long road. January 17th, Don Skinner uh, had open heart surgery. Uh, he has been in the hospital ever since. He is coming home on Monday. Yes. <clears throat> So praise be to God and congratulations to Don and to Debbie and to Dan. Um, and you know, also I want to lift up Marianne Marchio who did so much work in coordinating meals and so many of you that helped with meals uh, for the family and it meant so much uh, through this time and also coordinating rides for Dan. We pray comfort, strength and healing for those who are sick, recovering from surgery or undergoing treatment. Uh, we, we continue to pray for uh, the large number of folks that uh, have endured COVID over the past uh, 10 days or two weeks here at First Church. Uh, we've been asked if anyone has been hospitalized, um, and the answer, at least as far as we have heard, is, is no. Uh, we are aware um, you know, that, that for some folks, um, they've been asymptomatic. Others, it's been a bit more challenging, um, but we pray for everyone um, for recovery and good health. And as George mentioned in the beginning, um, you know, because of that and because, you know, cases are, are high right now, we're going to uh, continue with, with masks uh, at least through Easter, and then we'll reevaluate um, the following week uh, after Easter. For Bob Lobin, um, who's recovering from a severe infection, and I understand is at McLean. Yes? Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and an update on Bob. How are his spirits?
Good to see you here, both of you. Yeah. So getting better each day and a long, a long road ahead. Prayers will continue. Uh, for Pat Ketchabal, who is recovering from surgery, Pat is experiencing some pain, but is otherwise doing well. Um, and you know, Bill and Pat moved down south uh, quite a few years ago now, but are still very much connected here and often watch on Sunday morning. So prayers for Pat. For Abby Harris, as she continues uh, her treatment for brain cancer, receiving chemo um, five days a month, we continue prayers for her and for the Harris family. Uh, for Marissa Campanetti, who also continues treatment. Uh, for, for Marissa, and Marissa, I believe, is, is here. So, Marissa, we're really glad to, to have you here with us today, to worship with us today. And uh, we continue, you continue in our prayers. For Mike Wyeth, Joyce Kalika's cousin's husband, who underwent a bone marrow transplant uh, for a rare form of leukemia. For Cynthia Yosik's niece, Leela, uh, who is um, recovering from cancer surgery. And prayers as we pray each week for Patty Scanlon as she continues on her journey. Strength and courage for her. Pray uh, for the family of Nancy Wadhams following uh, the passing of her sister Betty on March 24th. And we pray comfort for both Dave and Nancy and their families. And Ted and Sandy Christensen as Sandy continues in hospice care. Uh, we pray for all God's children as we think about our wider community and world, and especially those in Ukraine, in Yemen, and Ethiopia, where the worst of human behaviors are on full display in the needless cruelty and destruction of war. We ask God to fill us and to fill our political leaders with righteous anger and empower us to act in ways that can bring true peace and justice in these places of conflict. We pray for courage to denounce hatred and bigotry, especially when done in God's name, and for the strength and courage to make the daily life choices to see the divine in one another, even with those whom we disagree. For all of those who continue to navigate uh, the symptoms of long COVID, um, Judy Baker is here, and she uh, is one that had that and has said that, that finally she is feeling that the fog is gone. So Judy, that is a celebration, and we're thrilled for you that um, you're experiencing some healing, hope. For those struggling with addiction, uh, for economic, environmental, and racial justice. For those at home, you can type comments in the prayers, uh, in, in, uh, type your prayers in the comments. For those that are here, um, what additional prayers do you have this morning that you'd like to lift up? Yes, Noelle. Prayers for your daughter, Jessica, as she heals. Yes, go ahead. Um, mom, 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 he had a type of disease and he died. Oh, okay. Yeah, so for your grandma, yeah, who passed, yes. And who's now one with God, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that prayer. Pray for her spirit. Yes. Joey. for God's guidance and God's angels walk with you. Yes. Luann? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Luann, for, for your family, for, for healing, for physical healing and also uh, healing in relationships and, and also for your friend. Thank you. The Lord be with you. God of transformation, on this Palm Sunday, we remember that Jesus' ride into Jerusalem was more than a show. More than the beginning of a celebration, it was an unmistakable sign that things were changing. A potent message to the powers that be that the world as they knew it was becoming the world as it should be. It was a radical act of defiance directed against those in his day who wielded power through violence, oppression, and tyranny. 
and it is no less radical, no less tame for those who do the same today. Jesus' humble ride in Jerusalem reminds us and tells the whole world that you are indeed coming to make all things new. You are coming to turn weapons of war into instruments of peace. You are coming to release those who find themselves in all manners of bondage, chains of injustice, chains of addiction, chains of conformity and apathy. You are coming to provide for the poor, food for the hungry, shelter for the homeless. You are coming to assure the dignity and equality of all who are downtrodden. You are coming to end violence and divisions, to provide safe communities and opportunities for education for everyone. You are coming to offer healing and wholeness, forgiveness, comfort, consolation, and hope. You are coming to transform all that we know. You are coming to save us. But like humble Jesus riding into town on a lowly colt, you aren't coming in pomp and circumstance. You're coming through the mystery of love incarnate, through your church, empowered by your spirit, through lives transformed and inspired, through ordinary people like us, blessed by you to do extraordinary things. Come, gracious God, into a world that longs for change, a world that needs your love, a world full of your children, a world ripe with hope and potential. Blessed are those who come in your name. We have come, we will go. And now we will pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. After Holy Week, we invite you to the Monday Thursday service, which will take place here. Uh, the past two years, it was online on Zoom, and it was beautiful in its own way, but we are glad to be back in person for this deeply meaningful service. Um, if you have not attended a, a Monday Thursday service, um, it, it's really quite powerful um, and also important. Uh, because if we kind of go from Palm Sunday right to Easter morning, um, we miss some things, right? And Monday, Thursday really helps us um, to live through uh, the pain that happens midweek. So we invite you here to join us then. That also then makes uh, Easter more joyful um, if we've kind of walked through the valley together. So um, on Easter morning, 8.30 and 10.30, um, and we do that uh, just to make sure there's a little bit more room between services. So next week, 8.30 a.m. Um, and 10.30, two services. Um, the services will, for the most part, be the same, with the exception of some of the music. Uh, so there'll be a, a variety of music at, at, at both services. But um, as far as the scripture and the word, um, all that, that will be the same for both. Um, it is for all ages. And we invite everyone to come and spend Easter here and celebrate uh, the risen Christ. Um, midweek Bible study this week, we'll be talking about the Easter story. Uh, so that's at 10 a.m. That is on Zoom. Um, that's continuing on Zoom um, because we, we find that, that folks who, who uh, are on that uh, Bible study really enjoy just logging on from the comfort of, of their own homes and the sharing that, that happens there from the comfort of that um, has been meaningful. And so that will continue on Zoom, at least for the time being. Also, um, we've started something new. It's called Lunch Pail Prayer. Um, with so much going on, as you look through our prayer list, you think about the world. Um, uh, Sarah Gaines and Penny Roskin brought the idea of, of doing some sort of a, a weekly prayer. And so that's happening at noon on Wednesdays. 
Um, both of those links are in the weekly email. Both of those links are on the website. If you go to uh, latest news on the homepage, you'll find them there. Um, you can donate Sunday flowers um, for the communion table, um, and you can do that in honor or in memory of a loved one. You can do that for a special occasion, for a birthday, for an anniversary. Um, to do that, um, you can either talk to Sarah Batchelder or you can call the church office, who will put you in touch with Sarah Batchelder. She, um, and there is Sarah. So, uh, yes, interested in flowers, you can talk to Sarah. Uh, we're looking for volunteers for VBS, Vacation Bible School. Um, <clears throat> this year it is happening um, at the Methodist Church. Oftentimes we, we alternate. Um, because of our sanctuary situation, it makes a whole lot of sense for it to be there this year. Um, but we are full partners, and so we need to bring our set of volunteers uh, to, to the table. So um, if, if uh, you enjoy uh, kids, um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's five days, but it is a half a day um, each day. Um, so, so come and form some great bonds and relationships with, with these young guys um, in, in June. Um, and then I'll just say for all of our announcements, once again, you can go to our homepage and click on the latest news. We give God thanks for this opportunity to be together to worship, uh, to bring our full selves to this space, and to hold at one time the joy and the hardness of life. And for this space, this brave space to be able to do that, we give thanks to God and we give our tithes and our offerings.
Our gracious and loving God, whom through Jesus meets us, walks with us, sits with us through the darkest times in our lives, and our God that doesn't leave us there, that turns on the light, that brings light into our darkness. May we be that church. May we be that church that meets people where they are and leads them to the light. May these gifts go toward making us and maintaining us as that church, as your body of Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now may the spirit of the living God made known most fully to us in Jesus Christ go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go behind you to nudge you into places you might not go by yourselves, go beneath you to uphold and uplift you and go beside you to be your strong and constant companion and dwell within you that you may know that you are never ever alone and that you are loved love beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you and within you today and always. Amen. <laughs>